All right, if y'all would turn with me today to the book of 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, and we're going to look at verses 26 through 32 today. 1 Corinthians 11, 26 through 32. So the Lord's Supper is an act of remembrance and is also an act of worship. It reminds us of what Jesus has done for us. It also reminds us to be holy. And it reminds us to live with expectation, for Jesus is coming again. The focus of the Lord's Supper is really upon Jesus. And we should not take of the Lord's Supper without first examining ourselves. Judge yourselves so that you will not be judged. Do not bring sin to the Lord's table. For if you bring sin to the Lord's table, you will be guilty of the body and blood of Christ. And if you do not judge yourself, God will judge you. So today the challenge is judge yourself. Confess any sins you may have. Repent of those sins. And then eat and drink and worship the Lord. 1 Corinthians 11, 26-32 says, For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till He comes. Therefore... Whoever eats this bread or drinks this cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For he who eats and drinks in an unworthy manner eats and drinks judgment to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this reason, many are weak and sick among you, and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we would not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened by the Lord, that we may not be condemned with the world. Father, I thank you for your word today. Help us to understand this act of worship, the Lord's Supper, as we take of your body and your blood, and we remember what you have done for us, And I pray that we would not bring sin to the Lord's table, that we would have a heart that is clean before you. Help us today as we examine ourselves to know where we stand with you today. And I pray that we would continue to seek holiness, to continue to seek to please you in all that we do. Allow your word to speak plainly to us today. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So judge yourself. The Lord's Supper is really an acted out sermon. I like that description of it. We are taking of his body and his blood and remembering what he has done. And we are proclaiming the Lord's death until he comes, until he returns one day. It truly is the gospel presented. For when we take of the Lord's Supper, we are told of his incarnation. The fact that God the Son put on flesh. He became a man at a certain point in history. He walked among people. They saw him. They heard him. They touched him. They saw him die. They saw him rise from the dead. And they saw him go back to heaven. This is the incarnation. This body and his blood. Just as you have a body and blood. We're also told of his sacrificial death. That he gave his body and his blood for the remission of sins. The fact that we can be saved because He took the full wrath of God the Father upon the cross in our place. And if we come to Christ, His blood covers our sins. We will not face eternal damnation if we come to Christ. He promises eternal life. The Lord's Supper tells us all these things. And we were reminded of the resurrection. For His body and blood is not walking among us now. For he has ascended to heaven, and one day he will return. The Lord's Supper is a tangible way to worship God. As you hold the body and the blood, you're reminded of what he has done. And God invites us to taste and see that the Lord is good. He has died for our sins. Verse 27, Paul says, Therefore, whoever eats this bread, or drinks this cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner, will be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. Therefore, since 
taking of the Lord's Supper, proclaims His death and what He has done for us by dying on the cross for our sins. If we bring any sin to the Lord's table, we dishonor His body and His blood. For He died for our sins. Why would we bring sin to the Lord's table? If we bring sin to the Lord's table, we are taking very lightly His sacrifice. We are taking very lightly our own sin. We should not take in an unworthy manner, as Paul says. What does it mean to take in an unworthy manner? Who should not take of the Lord's Supper? Well, number one, if you're lost, you should not take of the Lord's Supper. For His body and His blood mean nothing to you. Until you turn in repentance to Jesus Christ for salvation. If you are lost, you should not take of the Lord's Supper. But He invites you to come to Him. To be saved. Who else could take of the Lord's Supper in an unworthy manner? Well, this text today is actually written to a Christian audience. So we should understand that as Christians, we still have the ability to sin, do we not? We do. And if we have unrepented sin, that is, a sin that we're holding on to, maybe we really like that sin, maybe we're embracing bitterness, unforgiveness in our hearts, maybe it's a sin of lust, maybe it's a sin of a lie, if we have any unrepented sin, we need to turn to the Lord and ask for His forgiveness. Before we come to the Lord's table, we should not take it in an unworthy manner. Who else can take the Lord's Supper in an unworthy manner? Those that have indifference to the Lord's Supper. Or think of it as just a ritual without meaning. Or those that do not understand. And this is a challenge to parents. If your children do not understand what the Lord's Supper means... They should not take of the Lord's Supper. If your children are not saved, they should not take of the Lord's Supper. Do not take it in an unworthy manner. But Paul tells us, before taking it, this holy Lord's Supper, before taking it, examine yourself. And then repent of your sins. You see, God invites us to His table. But we must repent. We must turn to the Lord for salvation. We must ask God for forgiveness, and then we can partake of the Lord's Supper. We can eat and drink and worship with a clear conscience when we examine ourselves and repent. So the challenge is to judge yourself. Judge yourself. But we don't judge ourselves to beat ourselves up. And it's easy to do that when we think about how unworthy we really are before the Lord. But we judge ourselves to cleanse our heart. To please God, to seek His mercy, to receive His merciful cleansing. For God is faithful and just to forgive us of all our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And I love the image of thinking of that, of God with His arms wide open, waiting for us to come to Him. For you realize that God already knows what you have done. He already knows your sin. If you're lost today, He already knows how far you are away from Him. You're not telling Him anything new when you turn to Him. But when you turn to Him, He washes those sins away. He forgives you of all of your sins and you receive eternal life. You receive a new heart. You receive the Holy Spirit dwelling within you. This is our loving Lord who invites us to come to Him. And also as Christians, when we stumble, when we sin, He already knows. He knows what we have done. And He's there with His arms wide open. And He's faithful and just to forgive us of all our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Why will you not come to the Lord? Judge yourself before you take the Lord's Supper. Judge yourself or God will judge you. In verse 29, Paul goes on. It says, For he who eats and drinks in an unworthy manner, eats and drinks judgment to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. Do you see how serious the Lord's Supper is? How serious it is that we cleanse our heart before Him? Remember that God has called us to holiness. Be holy, for He is holy. Jesus says, If you love me, keep my commandments. We obey God. We pursue holiness. And the Lord's Supper is holy. That is why we are not to bring sin to the Lord's table. 
The problem with eating in an unworthy manner is that we're not discerning the Lord's body. We're not thinking about what he has done with his body and his blood. We're not thinking about his sacrifice. We're not taking the sacrifice serious when we eat and drink with unrepented sin. Examine yourself. Or you're not really considering what Jesus has done for you. And this is true every time we sin. Not just when we take of the Lord's Supper. If we're not thinking about the Lord and just continuing our sin, we're really just taking for granted what He has done for us. If He has died for our sins, why would we continue in that any more? Do not eat and drink in an unworthy manner. For if you eat and drink in an unworthy manner, you eat and drink judgment upon yourself. Now, as a Christian, this is not eternal judgment that Paul is talking about. Now, this is a punishment or a correction from our Lord. Do not bring sin to the table or he will judge you. In verse 30, Paul goes in more detail about this. So the church in Corinth had a lot of problems. If you know anything about their history, 1 Corinthians really is kind of like putting them in line. There's lots of stuff that the church in Corinth were doing wrong. And they were bringing sin to the Lord's table. And they were being judged for it. I want you to see this in verse 30. For this reason, because you've been drinking and eating of the Lord's Supper in an unworthy manner. For this reason, many are weak and sick among you and many sleep. And that's not talking about a nap. That's talking about death. Do you see how serious the Lord's Supper is? Some in Corinth had brought sin to the table and were judged. They had become weak. They had become sick. And some had died because they were taking the Lord's Supper in an unworthy manner. Now, I'll step back for a moment and say that all sickness is not a result of sin, but it can be. Let us examine ourselves. Let us judge ourselves before God. Be reminded of the seriousness of when we are a Christian we are carrying the holy name of Jesus Christ. We are to be a light in the darkness. We are to be a holy people. For God is holy. And God will purify His people. He will purify His people. The worst offenders in Corinth have been put to death. You see, God took extreme measures to purify the church. For not only are you bringing shame upon the name of Christ by taking the Lord's Supper with sin, you're also, unrepented sin brings a unholy influence to the church we are to seek holiness for God is holy and his holiness is very serious do not bring sin to the Lord's table but here's the fact we don't have to be judged you don't have to be judged if you were to judge yourself then you'd be saved from this punishment judge yourself and when you judge yourself become aware of whatever sin it is you're holding on to. And repent of that sin. That is what Paul is telling us to do here. He's not just trying to beat us over the head and threaten us. He's saying, judge yourself and deal with it. Repent of that sin. You see, as we judge ourselves, it's not to drive us away from the Lord's Supper. But it's to drive us toward repentance. It's to drive us toward our Lord. Remember, it is for our sin that He gave his body, and His blood. Why would we continue in sin? Why would we continue? The truth is, we all know that we're not really worthy on our own account to take of the Lord's Supper, are we? We're only worthy because of what Jesus has done for us. And this just shines a light upon the great love of our Lord, who calls us to faith in the finished work of Jesus Christ. The finished work, there's no... Further sacrifices, Jesus has died for our sins once and forever. He calls us to true faith. And true faith always involves repentance. That is turning to God. Turning away from the wide path of destruction and pursuing holiness. It's a lifelong pursuit for all of us to pursue holiness. So judge yourself to pursue holiness to cleanse your heart. Why does God chastise us? Why does He judge us if we refuse to repent and come to the Lord's table in this way? It is to purify us, 
It is to purify us. Look at verse 32. At the very end it says, But when we are judged, we are chastened by the Lord, that we may not be condemned with the world. Do you see what he's doing? He's keeping us from falling away. He's keeping us in that pursuit of holiness. This is why he punishes us to help us to pay attention. Some of the sin in Corinth was so severe that people had been put to death for it. But God protects his children, that he takes them safely home. And he doesn't want to see you fall into those sins. He doesn't want to see the destruction that comes from those sins. He calls us to holiness every day, every hour, every minute. He is calling us to Him. He corrects us. He corrects us to drive us back to Him and back to a holy behavior. If we would judge ourselves, we would not be judged. I invite you to take it a little suffer. But you have to judge yourself so that you are not judged by God. Now is the time when we will have a time of commitment. As we prepare ourselves before we take of the Lord's Supper. And I ask you today, if you know that you are lost, that you have never accepted Jesus for salvation, you should not take of the Lord's Supper. But whosoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And that whosoever is absolutely you. If you don't know the Lord, come to the Lord today and take of the Lord's Supper. Remember what He has done for you. And if you are a Christian today, but you know that you're holding on to some sin, you have some sin that you have not repented of, you should not take of the Lord's Supper. But here again is the beauty. God stands with open arms and He's faithful and just to forgive us of all sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Why don't you repent? Why don't you come to the Lord and ask for forgiveness and take of the Lord's Supper? Let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup. Father, thank you for your blessings of giving you your body and your blood. I thank you that we can be forgiven. And I thank you that you are always there with open arms to receive us. Guide us as we walk with you this week, as we walk with you each day. That we continue to pursue holiness, understanding that the sacrifice on the cross is for our sins. And why would we continue it any longer? I pray that your spirit would continue to guide us, that you continue to convict us of our sins, and allow your word to speak plainly to us and help us to be a light in our place. In Jesus' name I pray.